And hello and welcome to another of our special bonus episodes celebrating us reaching a hundred. We could not have come this far without the generous and ongoing support of you, our loyal listeners. And doing the heavy lifting behind the scenes, of course, are those wonderful and generous Patreon supporters. Let's also not forget our very special sponsors, Scale Model Supply and Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. So in this special episode, we're actually going to be having a chat with our good mates from Plastic Model Mojo, Michael and Kentucky Dave. We are rolling. Hello, everybody, and g'day and welcome to Ian, who's in the studio. G'day, Dave. G'day, listeners. And, of course, the... Oh, I was going to say something, Julian, but I better not. G'day, Julian. G'day. <laughs> <laughs> and on the line with us, or I should say via Zoom, we have got the boys from Plastic Model Mojo. We've got Kentucky Dave and we've got Mike. Hello. G'day, guys. Hey. Thanks for joining us, guys. Really appreciate having you on the show to help us celebrate 100 episodes, which is a pretty mighty effort, I have to say. Never thought we'd get to where we are, but here we are. Well, it's congratulations. I think you're right. That's that's quite a long time to persevere with something like that's, this. That's a big milestone to cross. We're happy you happy you made it. <laughs> so are we. <laughs> yeah. It's just been a lot of fun. And, you know, and that's what it sort of started off as, you know, well, started off because I couldn't find a podcast about modeling. So I thought, <laughs> oh, well, I'll start one. And um, we've sort of just rolled from there, really. Yeah. And kind of snowballed. And it's just been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Mm. We've met some really great people along the way. Yep. We've met some people who perhaps we don't want to meet. Oh, okay. Shh, the guys are on. They're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we were, uh, wait a minute, we were assemble that remark. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just great having you guys on, um, just helping us sort of celebrate this. Um, so it's really fantastic. So, so when there's no real sort of order, it's going to sit and yak and have a bit of a bit of a well, modeling, it's, modeling talk. Modeling talk. It's a bit early for us to be drinking over here. So, what are you guys drinking? Which is part of your shtick, Mike. Uh, I'm drinking our favorite gumball head. It's a really good beer. So if you come over here this summer, God willing, uh, we'll fix you. We'll we'll hook you up with some. It's good. Sounds it nice. Is. Sounds pretty good. Well, I, I'm drinking Old Forester hundred proof bourbon. Um, hundred proof? Gosh. Well, what? I'm sorry. Uh, hundred, yeah, hundred proof, fifty percent. Well, alcohol. You're gonna have to keep you away from naked flames because if you breathe out, woof. <laughs> <laughs> so no different than uh, when modelling. Then, <laughs> yes, that's yeah, true. It, uh, it's actually pretty darn good. I mean, uh, this is my first time with this particular bourbon, uh, this particular version of their bourbon, and uh, it's not bad at all. Mike and I have been talking back and forth about it. He's he's interested in a slightly different version of this brand. Well, I'm more of a beer man. Ian's the one who likes the spirits amongst us. I oh, like that. and beer. I like it all. Yeah, <laughs> just, just, just not. I just don't drink wine. Yeah, never say no. That's right. <laughs> Especially when it's free. Yeah, it's <laughs> too true. Well, because of our time yeah. difference over here, we're on the coffees and the orange juices at the moment, unfortunately. So it's. Um, I'm glad it's beer o'clock somewhere in the world, so it's good to see you guys yeah. holding up that side of the bargain, which is great. We, we still have to well, wait. We'd be, we'd be well, remiss to not show up with something tonight. <laughs> well, wait wait a minute. Wait a minute. If it's orange juice and coffee, you can put Baileys in your coffee, vodka in your orange juice, and you all are set. I mean, what's yeah. not to like? Exactly. <laughs> Spoken like a true alcoholic. <laughs> uh, beat me to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, guys, it, it was it was really really great to see you guys sort of burst onto the scene with your first episode. Uh, well, twenty five episodes ago now, because as we record this, yeah. you've just released your twenty fifth, which is uh, yeah. a milestone in itself. Yeah. And it was really great to see you guys sort of own it and come at it from a different angle. Um, 
with your, as you said, you know, you always start the show off with uh, what sort of liquid you're drinking or modeling fluid, and it's uh, really refreshing, and you've put a different spin on it, and it's um, certainly been, I know, welcomed by everybody who I've spoken to and listens to podcasts. Well, that's the feedback we get, and uh, when, you know, when, when the other guys came along, Scott and his show, I told him, it's like, we pretty much have the same audience, so it doesn't make much sense to start dividing it up. Mm. It's probably not that big anyway. No. So no. if every, if every, if everyone's kind of doing their own kind of take and trying not to to repeat a lot, then I think it works out, and we give people the reason to listen to all of them. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and and guys, not to, not to blow sunshine up your all skirts here, but uh, <laughs> uh, we owe you a debt of gratitude because you all have been doing it for a while when Mike and I decided to to do it, and you all were very generous in sharing what you had learned so far and what you knew. Um, and in fact, when the PPP guys contacted Mike because they were interested in starting, uh, he was generous with them in an attempt kind of to pay it forward from what you did for you, you all did for us. Well, it's all about sharing and caring and we've got such a fantastic community not only locally, but and what we've learned from doing this podcast is around the world. You know, you scratch any modeler and it doesn't matter what country they come from, they all talk the same sort of language. And, you know, it always amazes me when I look at our, um, our, our data as to where the show goes to. You know, we've got people in, there's a person in Laos that listens to us, um, India, right across Europe. Um, you Northern know, Europe. Northern Europe. And there's just everywhere, right across the world. There's a little small pocket down in South Africa. There's about five or six people down there. I know there's a actually a lady modeler down there Correct. who listens to us as well. Yep. And it's just um, it's it's just been amazing how the listener base has made it such a joy for us, and how you know getting their feedback and getting their emails and. But what's really I think is really satisfying is the amount of emails that we've received where people said. I'm not near a group where I can go and join a, a modeling club. And for me, these podcasts are my modeling club, which, you know, really sort of blows my mind. You know, Dave, we haven't you, had um, a listener, you know, from South, not South, North Korea yet. No, well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's the milestone I'm waiting for. <laughs> When he says, uh, uh, oh, I've got no one to talk to about models, I'll, be I'll believe him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you guys will be an episode 1,000 when they get the internet, so they have a lot of back <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, lots of back episodes to catch up on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, what's, what's funny is I know the guy who's listening to you in Laos. Oh, he's, an Australian, he's an Australian who lives there. 72nd scale modeler. He's on the 72nd scale aircraft forum. Oh, there, well, you, there you go. <laughs> you don't know his first name by any chance, do you? Uh, yeah, he, 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 know, he knows where he lives and everything, like right down to the <laughs> the province, the apartment number, and yeah, he, he's, he's been stalking him on Google Google Earth, and <laughs> he's an attorney. <laughs> you know, I'd ha I'd have to go look here, but I'm sure I could probably find it. Well, we'll just say uh, g'day, mate, and uh, yeah, g'day, thanks for buddy. listening to the show. Yeah. <laughs> oh, gee, that'd be a challenge doing modelling in Laos because of the humidity. I'm assuming would uh, play havoc with your paints and everything, wouldn't it? He, he's actually he's actually talked about that. That yes, that is that, and getting getting particular hobby supplies. Mm, yes. Yeah, that yeah, would be a challenge. Bit, yeah. That would be a challenge. Yes. Especially lately, because in the last six months, the mail has been crazy. What with all this, you know, um, virus and everything that's running around the world, it seemed to affect the postal services to a degree where, whereas once upon a time I could rely on something appearing um, within a week of me ordering it, or even a few days, now it seems to drag on for a couple of weeks now. Yeah. Oh, I just checked. The guy's name is James. He's originally from Brisbane, Australia. But he now lives in Laos. Wow, there you go. G'day, James. Hi, James. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. You know, we we get some of the same community type feedback, but I tell you, since this pandemic's hit, uh, we get a lot of email. I'm sure you do too. Of just folks genuinely genuinely appreciating what we're all doing, and I I'd kind of well, we we were getting some of that anyway, just with the general 
theme of modeling and them being isol in isolated communities. But uh, that's been kind of a, a surprise of some sorts to me. It's just how much you didn't think you would reach people like that or touch people that way. That was not my intent in starting this, but it's kind of a nice, nice effect to know that you you're being appreciated uh, for something you didn't anticipate. Too true. That's exactly right. And, and it, I mean, we've had um, people writing in and saying, oh, I've just stepped back into the hobby and uh, listening to your shows sort of helps us, um, you know, step my way through the minefield as to where, how you start. Because if you look at it, back in the 70s, I dare say even the 80s, certainly back in the 60s, getting into the hobby was fairly easy because you just bought a kit, you bought some crappy old humbrol paint, a hairy stick, a bit of glue, and off you went. Yeah. Whereas nowadays, you're bombarded with a plethora of different tools, paints, glues, even kits. Yeah, that's kind of like after you go down the rabbit hole, isn't it? Well, even yeah. I think even to start with, um, it could be a bit confusing for the first timer. I guess. It depends on like where... You, like if you step into a hobby shop, you might get bombarded. But if you're, um, if you're the kind of person who picks up the model kit that's being sold at Kmart or something. Yeah. That's yeah. a bit sort of more streamlined. True. They don't have any products on offer, so you just sort of take what's there and go home. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's yeah. just when you get on the internet and type, how do I X or Y, <laughs> yes. whatever. Oh, right? yeah. <laughs> that, and that... <laughs> well, the, the, the big boon, I think, to, to modelers today coming into the hobby... Uh, it, first of all, the kits are a whole lot better engineered. Having built enough of those old frog and airfix kits, you know, let's let's face it, it, it was tough to accomplish a good model from them. But these days, you come on, you come into the hobby. If you at all access YouTube, I mean, there's there's a a, a lifetime of experience and teaching that the the new guy to the hobby now it probably can be overwhelming to them. But it's a ton of great information out there. Oh, there is, isn't there? Yeah, actually, Dave, that's a very good point. Yeah. All that sort of um, um, knowledge uh, from generations of model builders is at your fingertips now. Yep, absolutely. Also, um, like, it can't be understated that the, the sort of the internet where it's sort of broadcasting, um, you know, small videos and, and things like that at random people out there to get them into the hobby. Mm. You know, I don't know if you get this, but I, I see like videos pop up in my Facebook feed of like some guy going, oh, I'll use a bit of this and a bit of that. And no, oh, I created a diorama, <laughs> you know, and you can tell he's not really a modeler. He's more yeah. like some, you know, I don't know, arts and crafty sort of person yeah. with a bit of a model lying around. And yeah. You know, uh, like there's yeah, there's like one one particular what's it called? Like um, something craft or others. Uh, they, they keep. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, they keep churning out videos, and they turn up on Facebook, mm. and you know he'll use matchsticks or whatever it is else, and build a little diorama, and like people will see that and go, oh, that's kind of cool. I could do that at home. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it gets well, them into some, the hobby. Yeah, some of those are showing plastic modeling now from that same. Uh, Yes. Same yeah. format. I, yes. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, they, craft the world matchsticks world. and all that. Yeah. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And then you got like Luke Towen with his uh, railroad oh. dioramas. They get around a oh, lot, yeah. don't they? Yes, yeah, they yeah. do. You know, that I've tried amazing. getting him on the show and is like pulling teeth trying to get him on the show. Yeah. I haven't been well, we're successful. We're small time compared to him. Yeah, you know, I know. Do you know how many subs he's got on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> I think he's already like cracked a million. Well, Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, like he, he's well, no joke. He's I don't know. You going? I I don't know if you've noticed with uh, uh, Martin Kovac, Uncle Night Shift. Oh yeah, he you know he gets half a million views. There are not half a million modelers watching those videos. There are people who clearly are just interested and i think that they that he may draw some of those people back into the ho into the hobby or back into the hobby definitely do you, do you think definitely. dave that uh, um, the a majority of those listeners or viewers aren't modelers though or do you think that they think in fact the hobby half. has got a, a large base to warrant that amount of views do you see what i'm saying he 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 yeah he see 
from from what I've heard him say, he doesn't seem to think that all of them are modelers. Mm. Well, um, there's the because he's he's primarily an armor modeler. There's the crossover with sort of like World of Tanks and things yeah. like that. that. Sort of you know, like if you've if you're the kind of person who's like plays World of Tanks and you've typed in T thirty four and Tiger Tank enough times, you're going to get stuff from Night Shift. Yeah. Because he's got videos yep. on similar yeah. things, you know? Yes. Yeah, that's true. And it's like, oh, I would, you know, some, some guy who, you know, 15-year-old who plays video games is going to look at that and go, oh, you know what? I could build a, I'd like to have a tiger tank that I made myself sitting on my ta- on, on on top of my... Uh, computer tower. Yeah, computer tower or whatever. <laughs> and then, you know... And they see what he can do with it, and it's like, oh, well, maybe I should go down this rabbit hole. <laughs> Believe it or not, in, in, in my social circle here in Lexington, uh, the, the regular group of oh, about 18, 20 people that we get together, well, before all the pandemic, but our normal social group for, you know, modest-sized gatherings, out of, out of all those friends of mine, there, there are two that listen to our podcast that have no interest at all in scale modeling. Oh, really? Yes. I, I was I was gobsmacked when they told me that. Wow, that's amazing. I don't know <laughs> why. I, I mean, I said, why are you listening to this? I, it's interesting. That's it what is, they yeah. say. Yeah. They can't, okay. <laughs> they, they, can't, they can't get enough of your sweet, dulcet tones. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Could what, be. What would be very embarrassing is uh, if some of those listeners are actually using your podcast as a, um, um, uh, to help them get to sleep. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to ask him that I, I, I'm going to ask him that That's a good question to ask <laughs> Well it's funny I've got some particular co- podcasts That I do you, listen you to um, of when I, when I go to bed Because it does help aid me just to drift off to sleep Because the monotone of the voice Is just very sort of relaxing And I use it as a sleeping aid That's weird. Have, have, have you ever listened to Mike Duncan's Mike Duncan's History of Rome no, I haven't. You a you should because he Mike. There's a guy who in college started a podcast just because he had an interest in Roman history. Ended up making a career for himself. He is now a full time podcaster, and it ended up spinning off into allowing him to write books. But I've listened to the history of Rome so, uh, a bunch of times and. He is one of those podcasters whose voice is very mellow, and you really can use it as a, a as a <laughs> sleeping aid as well as an ability to learn something. Yeah, not off, not off to sleep, wake up a bit smarter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Isn't it crazy how, like, in this day and age, there's like a, all these little niches that you know you're just on the the sound of your voice, you can make a living. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. But, but then, but it, what amazes me in this day and age that you know three retrobates like us, and of course the other two over there in Kentucky can, from their lounge or their basements, can just broadcast to the world. It, that that blows my mind. Yeah, there's a there's a guy who's um quite popular at the moment uh, on YouTube, and his um his YouTube channel is called Corpse Husband. <laughs> <laughs> and what he does, he's got a very deep, 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 croaky sort of voice. Yeah. And his whole channel involves uh, 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 telling true crime stories with his voice. Oh, seriously? That's it. That's all he does. <laughs> That's the biggest genre in the in this realm. Oh, yeah. yeah. True crime. Everyone loves that. I oh, know. Michelle's always listening to it, and um, it's a bit spooky. We sort of walk through the door, and she's got, you know... Uh, how to kill your husband sort of show on TV. And I go, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> am I interrupting something? the cutlery. Am I interrupting something, honey? No, 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 you're fine. Keep going. <laughs> you only have to be worried when she gets out the notepad. <laughs> That's a good well, start well, taking notes. Starts making brainstorming, you know. <laughs> well, what worries me is everything my wife has served me for dinner lately tastes like almonds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, a bit of arsenic. Hey, Dave, I need to stand up and salute you because I've <laughs> just caught on to the fact that you're building a 1350 scale model, which is a German submarine. Which one? You're doing more than one? No. What? <laughs> 
I don't think I'm building a 350th scale German sub. I'm 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 lusting over a 72nd scale World War One German sub. Oh, oh. The, new, the new dust work kit. I've got my yeah. wires yeah. crossed. Yeah, me oh. too. I'll, I'll be getting that one too when it gets released. Again. Oh, well, I, I take back the salute if you're not stepping into the world of 1350 scale then. You've just, sorry, you've, sorry about that. <laughs> but 170 I'm seconds d- a step next step down anyway. True. <laughs> well, what's, ama- what's amazing to me about that DOS Work U9 is I had no clue I needed that in my life until they announced it. And the moment they announced it, I took one look at it and I'm like, where have you been all my life? I, I, I was like, that that one leaped to the top of the list. It's like I had a blonde wig on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the beer goggles? <laughs> it, it could be that. It, it could be the bourbon goggles. The bourbon goggles, yes. Well, the bottom of that glass is kind of thick. <laughs> so have you actually purchased a kit then? No, it it doesn't release till January. You can start pre-ordering it, but uh, Andy Ho- Andy's Hobby Headquarters on YouTube, he got a pre a test shot of it and did an unboxing of it and then an actual build of yes, it. Yes, that's right. I remember and, saying that. Oh man, it, it's a nice looking kit. It, it uh, it's got enough. It's got kind of a steampunk flair to it. It's the uh, you know, it's not as as sleek as modern submarines, or even sleek as World War II subs, and and it just hits all the right spots for me. Oh yeah, it's got that old old timey look about it. Old timey, yes. there comes that. Oh, there you you go. have to use old-timey. that term again. That old time. I saw the opportunity and I took it. <laughs> you know, you know, old timey has made it onto the uh, uh, on the bench bingo card that we have to fill out when we listen to every episode <laughs> well it used to be the word ubiquitous but that that got dropped because i got so many complaints from julian about using the word all the time so old time is the next one there and the only reason you started using ubiquitous was because you watched the expanse well there was that <laughs> oh the the expanse is a fantastic show oh best science fiction show ever yeah it in is. my personal opinion anyway do, do you fo- do you follow the uh, writers of the Expanse on Twitter? Um, no, but I have. I've got every available book that I've read so far. Yeah, you are, you are. S. A. Corey and all of the TV writers for the Expanse are on uh, Twitter, oh. and it's some real entertaining stuff. Oh, would be, would be. I'll definitely have to check that one out. Yeah, yeah. The only thing Ian hasn't got yet is uh, a model of the ship. Oh, the Rossinato. The Rossinato, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, oh. you, you can get it. Yep. But, yeah, just a matter of actually pulling my finger out and buying it. <laughs> um, there's nothing stopping me from doing it. It's just actually remembering to buy it. <laughs> is, it is it the kind of thing you could scratch build or no? No. Uh, oh, you well, could if you you're could. skilled, if you're super skilled, yeah. <laughs> but if you can get a good resin is, kit of it, I'll get a resin kit of it. Yeah. Yeah. Save me the hassle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. How would you mount that? Like, would you have it set up like a like a ship model? Uh, probably, um, I think with that sort of thing, you'd probably mount it on a bit of acrylic rod. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. So or a brass rod. No, I'd go acrylic. Okay. Clear acrylic, I reckon, look much better than brass. Mm. Brass is too old timey. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm going to carpet hey guys, bomb this guys. podcast with that word. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. I've got a suggestion for you for a future uh, podcast episode. We're yeah. listening. I would love, I would love to hear more about tweezer skills. Oh, oh. tweezer skills, yes. Tweezer skills. Because that, that, yes, you. Uh, I forget which one of you mentioned it on an episode. Uh, this is probably two months ago, and I think that's a fascinating subject because I think you're right about the way people utilize tweezers or don't utilize them incorrectly well not just that you need to have more than one set i mean i think i've got about three different sets of tweezers that i regularly use plus about another four different types that i use haphazardly and and now and now and then 
Yeah, I've got about a dozen that I never use. And, and each, yeah, I know. I tend to just use the one. And each tweezers. No, do you really? I, I keep buying them, and then I only keep using the one. <laughs> you know, it's like, what are you doing with all your tweezers? Well, you're some, like tying one to each finger, and you're going to no, play no, 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 like no. Edward tweezer Edward. hands. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> I mean, you got to buy good ones. <laughs> you, yes, you do. But some tweezers, well, some parts demand a different type of tweezer to use to hold it, so they don't go flying off into the uh, into the carpet monster. I get. I well, get my problem is, I always have a, a son or somebody borrows them. Then when they get them back, that the tips don't close anymore. Oh, geez, that'd burn me up after spending thirty bucks on a pair of highly specialized oh, I, ones. I, I, I can beat that. Yeah. Yeah, a housemate had decided to use my uh, airbrush needle to uh, open up a padlock. Oh, <laughs> oh what? Yeah. Oh. So someone had to buy me a new airbrush. Oh, I'm surprised oh. Uh, he didn't find his like <laughs> arteries open with it afterwards. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> I was not impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely would oh, cut a vein after Pete. that. <laughs> <laughs> why, not just use, why not just use the, the rear end of it? At least no, that, no, that wouldn't have pointy, mattered. You used the pointy end. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, what did you think oh. it was like a, like a, what do they call them? Um, the, the thieves that, you know, cat oh, burglar? Cat burglar. <laughs> <laughs> you snitch the safe cracker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> did it work? Mm. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> did he, he get his, in? Yeah, apparently he got his lock open. <laughs> Well, good oh, for him. Well, yeah, so he, man- he managed to get to his, I don't know, two dollars worth of what he was looking for, <laughs> which ended up costing him over a hundred bucks to buy him a new airbrush. I may as well slug him for the whole thing. Has he, never, has he never heard of the two lock or the two paper clip method? Probably, uh, but he was a lazy sod. You can pick up. <laughs> <laughs> he was very lazy. Wow. So yeah, tweezers. Oh. Um, that, that, that sounds like an interesting. We'll have to we'll have to look into that. And um, and and this is the trouble. Also, not the trouble with podcasts. It's one of the, the the blessings is that we get so many people writing in with suggestions that um, it's hard to sort of remember what we've done in the past and and also remember the suggestions that the person sent in so that we can um, actually go ahead and do it. And then of course, there's finding enough content to talk about it for about half an hour or so. That's the other challenge as well. Well, what's your what's your mode of operation? Do you do you do much prep work, or do you oh, just run it cold? Uh, we pretty much run it cold these days. I'll I'll ring up these two, I'll text these two retrobates and say, oh, I think we'll talk about this on Saturday, and they go, yeah, okay, and then we just roll up and hit the record button, off we go. Yeah. Dave, do you mean reprobates? I said you're a reprobate. I thought you said retrobates. Well, you you're the retrobate because he's old. Ian's a reprobate. It's a difference. <laughs> right. I'm just using old timey words here. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> these are old timey. I'm pretty sure all these words are pretty current. So yeah, there's not a lot of planning that really goes into it. And unless, you know, we get a really cool idea from somebody who writes in and I thought, Oh yeah, we haven't done that before, we'll we'll hit that or we've got a um you know, a, a guest on the show and sort of let them run with it and just sort of feed into them. Um, but by and large, it's just um, we sort of we, we we did it at first. Yeah, at first I sat down and wrote reams of paper. Same and here, yeah. I remember Ian's very first podcast. Oh God, no! And he ha- he came in with this sort of um, we, all this loose leaf paper, and he, he spoke and read off the page as to how he built this particular model. So wrong. <laughs> I can't even listen to that episode anymore. And then you know we sort of both sat around and we said, oh, "No, that's a dumb idea. Let's just let's just sit down and talk." Shouldn't shouldn't it be about time to take down some of the really early stuff? Uh, got, well, each episode's actually got a, um, a heading as to what it's about. Yeah, but I mean, like, because I don't know if you've noticed, but we get a lot of people writing in saying. Oh yeah, I just started at episode one. Yeah, <laughs> and you kind of don't want them to do that. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> they, they may tune out before they get to any of the good episodes. You know, <laughs> so you reckon I should get rid of the first couple of episodes? Well, on one hand, it's nice to have it that it, have it all there as like sort of living memory of like how things used to be. Yeah. Oh, on the other archive. hand. We can just keep getting all these weirdos who just keep listening to the early episodes, <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> they listen to the first episode and then tune out. And like I, you know, you know, you know for a fact that even though you know we'll address this and we'll say no, don't, don't, don't listen to those ones. Those are the bad ones. Listen to something <laughs> more current and work your way backwards if need be. But 
Actually, they don't. It, you know they're not going to do it. Yeah. You know they're just going to go. Oh, I might miss something. And <laughs> <laughs> well, episode one wasn't too bad. We had Russ French on, who who does um, you know hobby uh, modelling as a, a full time job. I think it was about episode two and three that were a bit sort of wonky because we're still trying to find our way. Yeah, yeah. Until it was wonky till we got Julian on board. Yeah, now, now it's just terrible now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, at least you guys over there in Kentucky could sort of look at all the mistakes we made and sort of start from a you know pretty fresh sheet. So, do you guys sit down and plot out what you're going to talk about and write it all down, or do you just wing it as well? Well, I do put out a, a blank outline about four days ahead of, of the re- record. And, you know, it's not scripted or anything. I, mm. Just some bullet points to make sure I don't miss anything I want to talk about. But um, a lot of it's pretty pretty cold as well. But we do work for a set format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try, yeah, try we, to make it the same like, every time. We have like a, a, a theme we talk about, but everything else is just off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah, I think and there's I think a it segment flows a lot more natural that way. Mm. Yeah, lots of uh, segues. You know, we just go off on tangents. Oh, and do we ever? <laughs> we, we, that, we, that's we, what it helps we get prevent. To this point? <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. That's true, Mike. It does. Well, that's what I'm here for. I'm the I'm the I'm the tangent provider. Yes, <laughs> and I'm the one always trying to pull you back on target. You yes, know. stay you, on. You'd target. make a you'd make a terrible bombardier. Stay on target. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just needs bigger bombs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, my bombs are pretty big, actually. When I think about it, I drop one of those like almost once an episode. Not lately, haven't I? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Say some much. inflammatory thing that's bound to get someone. What well, can't go right what? in with an angry it's, email saying? Well, what, you know what? I really like those, <laughs> and you're wrong. <coughs> one of the funniest. Well, you're, probably, you're, you're probably getting hate mail from kit collectors now. Oh, that'd be me <laughs> <laughs> from last episode. Because they're that's, selfish. That's, <laughs> that's a great question. Mike, have we ever gotten hate mail? No, not yet. <laughs> It'll happen. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I I'm can sure. Rec- I'll rectify that. Just one second. Let's make him <laughs> like. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Here we go. Dave's going to type away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, the, yeah, yeah, I know yeah. the posse got the, the, the posse got one. I oh, did that really. Yeah, I'll let him tell you about that, though. <laughs> wow, that sounds, that well, sounds interesting. Wow. Wasn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, we did get a hate mail. We got some uh, critique. I think the one of my one of our earliest episodes was talking about um, Operation Impossible, where Churchill was planning to... Um, I'll take on the Russians. Take on the Russians, yeah. And uh, somebody wrote in and said, well, are you a history podcast or a modeling podcast? What the hell are you guys doing type thing? And, you know, this person <laughs> didn't mince words. And I thought, hmm, yeah. And it was a good critique, actually, because it sort of really brought me back on track as to where we should or should be. And so we sort of ever since have steered away from, um, you know, that type of um, topic. Although we will mention, you know, when we're talking about models, how they fit historically sometimes in yep. and how they're not correct yep. and all this sort of stuff. But, yeah. Yeah, it's best just to stay on topic. The biggest bombshell, I was thinking of bombshells and large bombs being dropped, was um, when I let slip when Ian did that big fart that time and it went to air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. That is a classic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be a classic for you guys. I mean, geez, it took me back to the old army days. Gas, gas, gas. <laughs> Reaching for my gas mask and putting it on. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just as I'd hit the sort of stop button, that, and I didn't think to go back and actually check whether, whether uh, you could hear it or not. But sure enough, we got some emails coming in about it. <laughs> in fact, I sent Scott Gentry the timestamp about two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you, Scott. He's oh, uh, is, is, is a, is a classic, that fellow. <laughs> yeah, fart, fart heard around the world. <laughs> the fart that echoed around the world. Yes. <laughs> the one that stopped the nation. <laughs> Instead of the guns of August, we could re- I should have renamed that episode the bums of August or something. <laughs> Oh, gee, some yeah. of the funny things. And, of course, I've done, yeah. other, I've done other clangers as well where I've done a recording and forgot to have somebody's mic switched on and halfway through the show realised it. And <laughs> Another one where we did a recording once and... Um, then you wiped it. I wiped it accidentally. <laughs> 
I hit Control Z or something, and the whole thing reverted back to the original. Oh, geez, a couple of shockers. We- we we lost an early one too. I can't remember what happened, but we had to go back and do it over, and that's always terrible. We we, yeah we, yeah we re. Although I'll be honest with you, I think the the episode that we did redone was actually better than the original. Uh, I just, think it, it just actually feels worked fake. out for us. I, I forget which one that was. Yeah, it was not, two or not three. As, it was, it's not as natural when you have to redo it. Yeah, because you sort of already know what you're talking about, yeah. and you sort of. I think you sort of skip over the interesting parts of the conversation by redoing it a second time. Definitely. Yeah. Most anyway. definitely. Yeah, I don't, don't I don't really don't like that feeling. Mm. Knowing that, oh, that's right, I talked about that and it feels a bit forced and, yeah, I don't like it. Yeah. Hey, guys, i got a question to ask you with uh, Nationals coming up in, um, sorry, sorry, Dave, you go ahead first. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. With with Nats coming up uh, next August, twenty twenty one, you guys uh, planning to actually record from the show itself? That's the plan. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. We have a table in the vendor room already, off in a in a one of the far corners. So we're kind of not on the middle of the floor. Hopefully, keep some of the background noise out. Not completely, but uh, not as bad as being hit from all four sides. And they've. Uh, they're helping us out a little bit, and they're anxious for us to come. It's just we have to wait and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Well, we've got the mobile, rec- we've got a mobile recording rig, right? Yes, we do. We're ready. Equipment wise, I need to pick up another microphone, but uh, so do I. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <laughs> but that's the plan. We hope to hope to do that and, and talk to some people there. And I don't know. I tell you, I go back and listen to your uh, expo. Uh, episode a couple three times just to kind of get a feel for what you guys did because uh, it's gonna be interesting the first time we hopefully that won't be the first time we do it it's Um, a lot of fun yeah it is a lot of fun and basically what we do is we just walk around the pavilion and snatch people yeah just grab someone by the (laughs) by the shirt collar and drag them over to the table and go there's a microphone now talk Mm. or you know the the hope was that the smaller invitational shows would open up again ahead of that late summer maybe but there's usually not a lot in the summer unfortunately and i don't know if we're we may cut our teeth at the at the big the big dance (laughs) (laughs) very cool we also what we uh, we got a couple of um, uh, banners and that that we put up as well just to sort of help advertise and let people know who we are and what we are and um, the background noise hasn't really been a bit of, much of an issue for us I guess it's the microphones that we're using as well which sort of helps you can hear it in the background but it's not overwhelming yeah. on the on the um, until someone gets on the loudspeaker well even then I've I've, I've listened back to it and it doesn't come across on the um, actual recording is what we hear it through our headphones yep. so. Um, it's it's really fun, and you, you come across some really interesting characters, and a lot of a lot of your audience who have the opportunity to sort of come up and sort of talk to you face to face, which is really super cool. We've had a lot of people ask us if we're going to be there, or, or say they look forward to, to meeting us there. It's just this pandemic and these vaccines, and mm-hmm. it's just a it's just a crapshoot right now as to what's going to happen. Exactly. Well, I'm definitely planning to be there. I know these two boys are sort of thinking about it, but it's all dependent on whether we get a vaccine prior to the actual show. And um, if we do, I'm definitely coming over. There's no two ways about that. Well, good. That'll be that'll be great. You guys got some beers oh. that you owe me. Oh, uh, we do. <laughs> no, you a, a lot. <laughs> You we're, won't have to drink them all the first night, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we're 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 going to test that legendary Aussie drinking ability. Well, if I drink some of your um, standard beers, which you just get uh. in any, I, I I can be standing all night and just keep going and going <laughs> and going. Some of this yeah. sort of other craft beer that you're drinking over there, hmm, I'm a bit suspicious about that. It'll probably knock me for six. <laughs> Now you've got some of that over there too. Oh, don't worry, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's a funny one when he's drunk. He's a funny drunk, actually. So yeah, that'd be cool to see you getting drunk over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it would. laughs> just long as we don't. Get let it. me warn. Let me warn you: if you all get drunk in Vegas, you may wake up married with a tattoo. <laughs> well, I've already got tattoos. It's just where the next one appears. <laughs> <laughs> Next subject. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 
Next next subject, Goldfinch. Um, yes, Kentucky Dive. I was going to ask you, you talked about show prep. I was going to ask the other side of that. Do you do much post-production? Um, not a great deal because I've pretty much got everything all sorted out and I'm such an old hand at it. So I've got my pre-recorded um, advertising stuff in there. And I'll just when I hit stop. I use GarageBand as the uh, medium that I record on, and um, I can just sort of move things around left, right, and center. There might be when we finish recording something, um, I'll just cut the end off it so you don't hear the sort of the, the microphones being put down, or Ian doing a cussing word or something like that <laughs> as he gets up and leaves, or, or that such stuff. But not not a great deal. Just really, really sort of minor stuff. It's. Um, yeah, it's all pretty much just record it, just have a quick check, make sure everything's turned on, it should be turned on, and off it goes to the cloud. Well, let, let me let you in on a little secret behind the, the door here. Uh, uh, Mike, being an engineer and a perfectionist, does post-production to the point that when he drops the episode and I listen to it, I am amazed by the fact that it sounds completely different than the raw recording that we did um he 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 edits out all, uh, more of my ums and uhs and all of that than uh, uh than i do and he it, it he really does a lot of post-production well it's interesting because i was looking at um at that, I was really sort of scared about at the beginning. How deep do you go into you know post production and do all that? But then I read a couple of different articles and I'm on a couple of different forums, and some people say, "I hey, just leave it all in because it sounds natural," and that's what people are tuning into us for because it's their sort of version of us hanging out at the for them hanging out at their local club. Yeah, it's not it's not too flashy. No, no, no. Yeah, if I was doing something where you know we've got you know. A hundred thousand. Well, the advantage you have is you're all three sitting in the same room. Oh, yes, yeah, that yeah, helps. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. helps a lot. So we don't use Zoom to record. Uh, so we're not even face to face video. We use a, a a third party application called ZenCaster, and because we can't see each other, we don't have any visual cues or clues that somebody's getting ready to say something or or whatever. So all the over talk we get, most of it, I, I work through work all that out of it. Mm. And that's what we found when we were in lockdown. It was, didn't we? We we really sort of missed sort of being able to sort of look at each other in the same room and and um, bounce bounce off each other. And yep. uh, two episodes ago, I was allowed to have Julian in the room, and we had a great episode that one. Yeah, I know. And then you should have been there. Ian. <laughs> you should have been there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I should have. <laughs> and um, and then um, then the episode, most recent episode that we uh, that we dropped after being fully out of lockdown we had Ian back in it was just like you know it's like the band back together again it was great it was, it was yeah if I was allowed well, to use six. if I was allowed to use music which I'm not for copyright reasons I'd um, use Thin Lizzy's The Boys Are Back in Town as the intro for <laughs> oh, that particular that'd be episode. great yeah <laughs> <laughs> if, well if I noticed got... uh, Stuart was flirting around with some James Bond music in his last episode I hope he oh. doesn't get a letter no oh. No man, I'm, I'm. It's funny because sometimes um, I'll 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 look at I'll use some Russian stuff. Cause I quite like uh, Russian sort of music. It really sort of appeals to me. It sort of moves me inside. And um, you know, like the Volga. You, you commie. No, I'm not a commie. No, yeah. I'm just I just, just really they've they've got it really down pat. You know, the old sort of Soviet sort of music. I think it's great. Anyway, um, you will play or go to the gulag. <laughs> well, like a like, like emotionally or like a big plate of fried food. Um, emotionally, yeah, yeah. You okay. Can sort of, you, you, you can sort of picture the sort of you know the uh, Cossacks sort of streaming across the snow-covered steps with this music playing in the background. It's just very I evocative. Couldn't, I couldn't work like that. Not uh, a what, chance. Yeah. Uh, w would you call that old timey? I would. <laughs> oh, jeez. I would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> well, Ian, what do you listen to? Uh, usually classic metal like Motorhead. Um, bit of Black Sabbath, uh, Iron Maiden, yeah, you know, all, all the classic eighties heavy metal bands, and loud. It has to be loud. I uh, just just to just to clarify, I don't listen to that Russian music while I'm sort of built. I, I've used it in a couple of podcasts, is what I meant to say. And oh. um, 
And I thought to myself, I'm a bit nervous using this because I don't know whether it's in copyright or out of copyright. And it's funny, and this is the way the copyright laws work. So, for example, the 18th, 12th Overture by... Um, um, Beethoven. Be- Tchaikovsky. Tchaikovsky. Oh, yes. While the music is out of copyright and anybody can use it... The performance. If the performance by people who use it is copyrighted. Mm. Yes. So, for me, legally to use the 18th, 12th Overture, I'd have to go back and find a... a Pre nineteen thirty recording of it or something like that. Why don't you just use your yeah. banjo? You guys diss on me when I use my banjo. Yeah, because oh. you're playing nonsense. If you play something decent, we may not diss you. Would- no, no, no. See, I, I, I'd rat on him even if it was you know something good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm I'm, fr- I'm from Kentucky, and I'm not sure that even I am prepared to listen to the arrangement <laughs> of the 1812 overture on banjo. <laughs> oh, oh, I just think it'd be funny to watch try and watch Dave try and do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a there's a bluegrass band out there, and they've got a bunch of YouTube videos, and their name is a play on ACDC. They're oh, called Hey CDC. Yeah, Hey CDC. Yes. Brilliant band. <laughs> yes. I, and I, I love their shtick. Yeah. Their shtick is they were, they were wandering through the Appalachian Mountains uh, chasing coons or something, and they came across a car yep. wreck. <laughs> and in the boot of the car wreck was a whole selection of ACDC albums. <laughs> <laughs> and to actually listen to these guys is they're actually really good. Yeah, they, they are. They're really, really good. Yeah, they are good. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's what you need. You need good music when you're modeling. Oh, I listen to podcasts mainly when modeling. Uh, yep. or anything from the eighties like uh Pink Floyd, um Led Zeppelin's another favourite of mine to listen to, um, Die Straits, um, some Bowie sometimes if I'm in the right sort of mood. I listen to the old timey stuff. Julie, well, I listen to the old timey because I'm about to say I listen to the old timey stuff because right. this is all before you were born. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, that's like most of music history. <laughs> <laughs> How about you guys over there, Mike? I listen to a lot of uh, late seventies and eighties new wave. I listen to a lot of uh, jazz, like piano jazz. I like that a lot. Mellow music. I, I, it's it's, it's got to be mellow and calm for me, mm. or, or something. I know I, I, that head banging stuff. I don't see how you do it. Oh, yeah, I know. It's it, a bit it, weird. If the if the window is shaking, I'm happy. Yeah, no. I actually I went over to Ian's place one time when he was modelling. He knew I was coming too, and I was I was knocking on his on his door for quite some time. And <laughs> I think you ended up sending me a text message. Yeah, yeah, yeah and you I'm only looked at oh, it okay. by chance too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, His neighbor's the looking at you, just shaking her head. <laughs> <laughs> when, when you meet Ian in person, you'll get it straight away as to why. <laughs> yep. Uh, Kentucky well, Dave, I, how about you? I listen to either big band, um, 50s Motown. Um, sometimes I'll put on, I'm like you, I'll put on uh, either a modeling podcast or a history podcast. Yeah, yep. yep. Um, those the the advantage of those is that you can listen without having to look at something so that you can concentrate on what you're modeling but uh, the audio isn't distracting or at least it isn't for me and it's kind of like multitasking so i enjoy doing those but if i'm listening to music it's big band of the 30s and 40s or it's uh, 50s Motown. Uh, by the way, if you like Thin Lizzy's version of The Boys Are Back in Town, listen to the version by The Bus Boys. Oh, okay. That would probably be the original, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's it's the version that's used in the movie 48 Hours. Oh, right. Okay. Oh, right. I know. Yep, 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 yep. Now Dave's going to make a note here. Just writing that down. <laughs> <laughs> the Bus Boys. Cool. K- Kentucky Dave's your your ideal trivia partner, by the way. Oh, wow. thank you. <laughs> His head's full of useless knowledge. It, my, that's exactly what my wife says. <laughs> okay, Goldfinch, yep. I have to ask you one more thing. You've been married how long now? Um, three years. Yes. Uh, I saw I saw your anniversary on Facebook. Congratulations! Thank you. But what was your future wife's reaction when you first let her see the model room? 
Well, um, I sort of I, I explained to it fairly early on. I said, look, um, and I let her know that this is um, my area where I go to for my happy place, which she kind of looked at me quizzically when I mentioned the word happy place because I think it maybe had different <laughs> connotations for her, you know, what it did for me. Um <laughs> And and she was fine, and she's always been fine with an extremely supportive. And I must say, even um, um, in my first marriage, um, uh, that partner was extremely supportive as well. Although uh, Michelle is even, she, it's funny. She sort of pats me on the head and says, "Oh, are you going to go play with your toys now? Are you?" <laughs> and she does it on purpose because she knows it winds me up. <laughs> but um, but she loves it because from if I go off in the in the um, in our build room. She can. She's got the whole TV to herself, so she can go and watch whatever she wants to watch and not be disturbed by it. And um, she was very accepting from the beginning. And and it always puzzles me where we we always get the odd sort of uh, email, or you read somewhere in the forum now and again, or on Facebook, where a guy will say, you know, my partner hates it. And and in fact, that's why we had a, a episode. I think it's around episode fifty, where we had a um, a discussion. I actually had Michelle on the show, and uh, she sort of spoke about it from her point of view. And we sort of spoke about how way to include your hobby and uh, not to the detriment of your relationship. And um, it was, I think, it was quite a good show. We got a lot of feedback from that too, actually. So to answer your question in a long-winded way, she's extremely supportive. And she's more than happy for me to do it. And she makes the right amounts of oohs and ahs when I show her the finished one that she convinces me that she's interested. And she's got a really good recording of those oohs and ahs. <laughs> well, the re- <laughs> well, the reason I ask is one of my favorite stories is when uh, uh, been dating my now wife for uh, of 22 years when we were still dating – about three months into it, um, you know, she she knew I had a hobby and all. And when I finally let her see the room with the stash in it, and now keep in mind, I have about a thousand unbuilt kits. Wow! Oh. Her she, I showed her, I, I showed her the stash. She looked at it for a minute and turned to me, and these are the loving words that she said: "What were you thinking?" <laughs> <laughs> You'll need five lifetimes to build those. <laughs> yes. She's actually, ext- the model wife is extremely tolerant, and very caring, and got no problems, but she she looks on with bemusement at the hobby. Mm. Yes, the way we look at them when they buy shoes. So, but for me, I've, yes, I've, I've, I've looked- exactly. So an interesting thing with my case is uh, I was actually uh, dating an ex-girlfriend when I got back into the hobby. How you were dating an ex-girlfriend? She went back for a second time. No, 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 no. She's an ex-girlfriend now. Oh, thank you. you okay. So I was the, anyway, we were dating, and then um, uh, a, a mate of mine at work said, "Oh, come check this out," and uh, he showed me a model kit, and it was a tank, and I was like, "Oh, okay, these things. I used to build these kind of things when I was younger, you know." He's like, oh yeah, I just joined this model club and uh, and uh, you know I'm gonna get back into this because I used to do this as a kid. I'm like, yeah, I used to do this as a kid as well. I'm, I'll, I'll I'll tag along because he invited me to like a, a club night and uh, I turned up at this model club and you know you guys are all there, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know I was sort of like going, oh yeah, I should get, I should really, I should, I should get back into this, you know. I was thinking of like, what should I get? And I hadn't bought anything yet. Yeah, I hadn't bought a single thing. And then she gave me two kits because like, she obviously noticed that I was expressing an interest in things because we'd go to the, you know, go here and there and, oh, look, there's a shop that sells them. And you know, I was looking at them and umming and ahhing over what I should get as my first kit. And she bought me two of them for my birthday. Hang on. And she's an ex-girlfriend? What the hell's wrong with you? Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> the, the modeling thing wasn't the problem. There were other problems. <laughs> Like her being crazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I won't get into that. No, no, don't get into that. No, no. The, no. O- the only comment I'll make on that is go to YouTube and and put in hot crazy scale. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll yeah. say that one. Yes. <laughs> yes, and there definitely is. A, a, it's, it's scientifically proven. Uh. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> How about you, Mike? You're the only um, other one of us who is married. Uh, I guess it's been so long. You know, Dave and I have been married almost the same time. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't God. realize you guys yeah. are in a marriage. That's um, interesting. No, we- <laughs> you misunderstood. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. <laughs> We, we had our first dates with our wives on the same day. We came back from the Chicago figure show on Saturday because we both had dates with first hot, dates. Hot dates. Hot, first hot <laughs> dates with, with new, new women. And both of us ended up mar- marrying those girls. Well, well what a that's, great story. That's impressive. Yeah. But back to the, the, the hobby part of it, I, I've, never, I've never had a problem. Um, she used to hate to see me go back before we had kids when I'd tear off and go to the amp show and 10 hour drive. She's always worried about me on the road and stuff like that. But, uh, um, you know, I'm always getting model gifts for birthdays and Christmas and it's, it's been pretty good. Sometimes I'm in the basement too much, but I try, I try to, I try to meet her that. <laughs> See, we, that's what we don't have in Australia. We don't have basements in Australia, which is no. uh, it's pretty unique to sort of Europe and North America having basements. And uh, I've always wondered why we, we should do that, given our, the heat that we have over here in Australia. It makes sense to have basements. Mm. Yeah, maybe your water table's too high. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, we a, do have the artesian. It's, well, it's, it's a, quite large. Yeah, but it's a very arid country, so I don't think that kind of works. So. Yeah, it's only arid on top, Dave. <laughs> well, that's a good point, too. <laughs> you, look, you look at the size of the artesian basin. That covers nearly, what, a, a quarter of the country. I, the basements don't go down that deep. Yeah, but it's still water that covers a quarter of the country. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. underground, but it's still there. Mm. Anyway, there's a little segue sideways things there. Yeah, As usual. <laughs> As usual, that's the way we usually roll. <laughs> I think it's more a case of like, you know, uh, no one's prepared to eat the extra um, construction costs. Yeah, that's a point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, that could be it. It's probably about half the houses here. Especially with new builds, new builds now don't have as many. Seem, seems to be the case. Hmm. Yeah. yeah can, wasn't it a, a case that a lot of heating systems were sort of installed in the basement area? Yes. Uh, yes. Sometimes that's true. Yes. Well, a lot of times, if there's a basement, it usually is in the basement. Yeah, it was yeah. out of the way. <laughs> Whereas most of our central heating's in the roof now, is where the system's installed. Yeah. Which is a bit of a problem if it ever breaks down because. They generally install it when the roof isn't being fitted to the house. <laughs> yes. Oh, it makes you wonder how. Oh, okay. I won't cross that bridge. Too true. <laughs> hey, guys, we're, we're coming up hard and fast on our one hour, which we said we're going to have a chat. So just moving forward into the future, um, where do you guys um, see yourselves heading? In the near term, we've had a lot of topics that, uh, for lack of a better way to describe them, have been kind of transcendental, I guess kind of uh, hobby attitudes and just stuff like that. And we're, we're going to kind of take a technical turn now for the next few episodes. But long term, I just hope we persevere and don't get tired of doing this because it's funny how a lot of these people start expecting this and they have high expectations. <laughs> yes, it's very true. Yeah. It's funny when we did the um, we did the sort of the week on episodes during – uh, our first lockdown, we sort of saw it as our civic duty to do that. Um, the amount of mail we got in after we mm. went back, reverted back to our fortnightly schedule, and the, the, the people expressing their disappointment. And, but trying to do this weekly, man, it'd kill us. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it'd kill, it'd kill me. I do, mm-hmm. I do too, too much post-product, per, uh, post-production to do this every week. Well, I'd do too I much, it, I'd do too much cooking at the beginning just to keep these guys fed and happy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, that's what I was saying earlier, like uh, before we, we got on, on to do this, this episode, is that uh, it, it may be 100 episodes, but it's also 100, 100 meals. meals. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Cause Cause we well, I was there since the very beginning, so I didn't get the full 100 meals. Because we used hey, to do hey, this Mike. At- Mike, I want to complain. Where's my meals? You haven't fixed the damn meal. It's upstairs in your kitchen. Because <laughs> we used to we, now, used, to, we used to record at the night thing, time, and um, and so the boys would come over in the evening, and we'd uh, Michelle cook up, a, and she's a great cook. Oh, yeah. oh my god! And <laughs> because of Ian's sort of new job, we had to shift to uh, a morning schedule, so we picked the sort of Saturday mornings that we do, and. Uh, I'm the breakfast king, so I cook all the breakfast for the boys when they get here. In fact, Julian got here early today, 
half an air reel and he goes oh so it is true you do do the cooking <laughs> uh, yeah i didn't believe it <laughs> he's expecting appetizers yeah mm. <laughs> true now one more thing i'd like to say is is that just the community has been great with with you guys and with uh, the other two podcasts uh, i i told you uh, a week or so back dave that i was giving you an update on Stuart's wife her situation because I, yep. I wasn't sure if you knew or not yeah and I, I i told you a year ago i didn't know any of you guys and now i'm checking in yeah so i think that speaks volumes is how well all this has come together for very true yeah. well really really appreciate it it's a lot of fun the three of us over here consider you guys our mates now so yep. it's um you're one of us yeah <laughs> one oh god of us. <laughs> one, one of us, us. <laughs> And uh, as I said, we're all we're all really excited and looking forward to the potential possibility of getting over and seeing you guys next August. So, very excited about that. Yeah, I hope it comes together. Yeah, I, I think it would be a pretty pretty fun time. Yeah, mm. true. And and just to echo what Mike said, it's just you know, it's just a, another model club by extension, really, isn't it? And you know, in the way that you know we've all sort of gelled together and had a good time and mm. shared our experiences, and it's just yeah, really good. Yep, totally agree. Yep. Gentlemen, I want you all to try and make it over here. We're going to show you what Kentucky hospitality is like. Oh, yeah. You get over here, get to Vegas, and we'll we will we will make sure to show you the hospitality that you so richly deserve. <laughs> Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Kentucky Dave. We're definitely going to look forward to that. Mike, thanks for being on the show. Dave, thanks for being on the show. Really appreciate you guys oh, helping us to Thank celebrate you. our hundredth episode. And kudos to you and your show, and we look forward to returning the favour for your hundredth episode, perhaps. Yeah. Absolutely, happy hundredth. No yes. worries, guys. Thanks for being with us. Catch ya. Take care. Bye. Well, that was a lot of fun catching up with Mike and Dave, and don't forget you can hear them every fortnight on their great show called Plastic Model Mojo, available every fortnight. Also, check out the Scale Model Podcast, and of course the Plastic Posse Podcast. My name's Dave. Thanks for listening.